everybody. Welcome to Talking Heartland. And this is the show where we are recapping back episodes of the Heartland show. And it's a lot of fun. We're back. It's been what, three months, I think, since we last talked about Heartland. But we're excited. We're diving into season nine, episodes one, two, and three. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner, and Michelle's here. Hey, everyone. We're back. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yes welcome back it was it so nice to start watching heartland again yeah so much and i thought it was so funny that we coincidentally like ended where we did because like i think in the third episode they talk about how it's like a new chapter and it really felt like that it feels like we're like entering a new point of amy's life of like her being an adult yeah um so yeah we we ended at the perfect point i think so too i felt that too that uh, even with, you know, some characters that we maybe didn't like as much, I feel, mm-hmm. you know, someone like Tim, like it, it felt like a new chapter for even some of our side characters. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, let's dive in. Let's get started. So our first episode is called Brave New World. And as you like to say, it's kind of a brave new world for Amy and for Lou in particular. And the summary is uh, Ty and Amy are back from their honeymoon and Georgie is trying to be able to handle what is going on with Lou and Peter. Ty and Amy are adding on to the loft and Amy and Georgie find a hurt horse. So what overall did you think about this episode? Um, Yeah, I feel like it's sort of very standard um, heartland of sort of recapping and sort of trying to sort of put things in motion for you know the season going forward um but I feel like it was it was a really good sort of easing into into this um new part of of I guess Heartland's future um and I liked that it was very sort of family focused um and later episodes I did sort of miss that big sort of extra plot of like you know having like a, a sort of character of the week but I do like these sort of beginning episodes where they just focus on our main characters and sort of, you know, reestablish us and sort of reintroduce us to them again. Yeah, I I think so. And especially with Amy and Ty, Mm -hmm. uh, because we never really got to see them being that intimate, you know, like it it was always kept pretty chaste, which I support of I don't have a problem with but it was nice to see this new sort of side of them as a couple Mm -hmm. really kind of an everyday intimate existence Mm -hmm. as a couple yeah yeah I agree um and they both look so I I don't mean this and like they they look so old but they just look so much more mature yeah um they look like grown-ups um Mm -hmm. And maybe it is because they're married, that the writers are very confident and like they can sort of have them, you know, sleeping in the same bed and, and it not being like a thing. But, but that the family sort of have to comment on it, it, they can just be a married couple now. Yeah. I did like that when uh I can't remember if it's this episode uh or the next one when uh Jack is <laughs> it's like it's kind of it's like cool. <laughs> and they're kissing and then and then they're like we're married now you better be <laughs> that was funny <laughs> so <Jack>. <laughs> <laughs> um but we have georgie she is uh in all three of these episodes she's working towards uh her trick riding and she's on the extreme mm-hmm. team and uh they i think that it's actually her doing that it looks really good if it's a if it's a double yeah they, they do so well with the doubles on this on this show um and they do they, they do show to in a way it's like yeah that that's pretty seamless and like some shows you watch things and you're like they've got like a completely different like height difference and you're like yeah, yeah, that's not the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah if it's not her they did a very good job yeah in yeah, these scenes yeah, yeah, but she's obviously struggling with her parents separating, Peter and Lou, mm-hmm. and Peter wants the girls to come visit him in Vancouver uh, and, for the summer, and 
obviously Lou's struggling with that. Mm-hmm. At first, they don't want to have lawyers get involved, but then they uh, they realize that they need to uh, by the end of the episode. And I don't know, this is just so hard. Divorce is so hard. Yeah. I mean, I've yeah, never experienced yeah. personally, but mm-hmm. still. Yeah, it was sort of interesting watching these episodes of like, I'm not married, so obviously not divorced. Um, Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up around divorce. My parents are still together. Yeah, me too. A lot of my friends' parents are still together. Um, So I never really had that thing of like, my friend is going away for six weeks because she's like spending time with her dad. I never really was around that. Um. And it's so a lot of my experience is just watching it through media. Um, and I feel like some shows just are not good at it. Um, yeah. And I feel like so far Heartland is approaching it in, in the correct way of like, there's no winners here. Like there's no, right. yeah, it's just, you know, it's hard on, on both sides. Um, and I think like one of the worst sort of, and it, it actually made me like not watch the show for a while was Grey's Anatomy. Um, they had like a whole um, court proceeding and, and you know custody thing over like it was it was I can't remember what season but it was um, uh, Jessica Capshaw and, and Sarah Ramirez characters um, and the social media like was crazy at the time and the show's you know social media team was also getting involved and like having you pick like Team Cali, Team Arizona and it was like so ugly and on, on sort of the, the the show on the on the social media aspect of it um so yeah I, i'm curious as to how this sort of went down at the time that it aired but i feel like they're approaching it in a way of like yeah this is just sad for everybody yeah i think so and i mean they have to be really careful because lou can be kind of an unlikable character mm-hmm. uh and I, I, so when she's being really demanding of both Georgie mm-hmm. and Peter, yeah. it can make her feel like kind of a shrew, which yeah. isn't necessarily fair to her character. Um, and you do have a few moments like that, but overall, I think they did a pretty good job uh, in these three episodes, at least, of writing this. And maybe part of it is because we were never really that invested in the Peter and Lou relationship. They didn't do yeah. a very good job setting it up or keeping it like it was always a marriage of conflict. It was, they had little moments, of course, of, of uh, good moments, but, but it was never enough to kind of keep you were like really invested in this couple. So I'm not like devastated that it didn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. I think for it, if anything, I'm so excited for Peter going forward. Um, yeah, and yeah. Gabriel is in the show like going forward, um, and he's so good with the girls, and he's so good with with Jack. Um, that I think yeah, it would be I mean, to sort of see him in a whole new light because we do like those moments. Yeah, I mean, Lou almost had to kind of get talked into even marrying him. It was just not; they just didn't do a good job building up the relationship. So, yeah, I agree yeah. with you. Um, so they have this. Uh, this horse that's hurt because there's a bear in the forest Mm -hmm. and I'd say they did a pretty good job with that bear for the budget the show has that yeah that that bear scenes were pretty well done yeah and I thought like the way that Amy handled it was really good of like this is a a woman that's you know grown up around this like she knows Mm -hmm. how to handle it and, and sort of get Georgie sort of safely out of there I did think it was interesting in, in sort of these episodes that Amy and Georgie have sort of flipped a little bit like Georgie is sort of pushing for the more like we have to go do this and Amy's a little bit more no we have to be safe it felt like that was Amy's role a little bit in those early seasons yeah I mean and I can see Lou's point of being nervous about Georgie uh mm-hmm because not only does she not want her daughter to get hurt but she also doesn't want any ammunition against her uh in if she were to get hurt and that's more in the next episode but still i can understand her anxiety just like period because uh you know you don't get nervous of your kid doing something dangerous but um uh the um 
uh, there's also Ty and Amy. They are f- fixing up. Uh, there's going to be fixing up the loft for them because they hate being in that camper, which I don't blame them. I would not want yeah. to be in that camper. Yeah, I'm so confused of like, okay, they're living in a camper, which is not a great situation. Living in a barn doesn't seem like a great situation either. Like they're living above horses. Like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> if, and Amy takes in problematic horses, like ones with like emotional problems like i feel like that's mm-hmm. gonna lead to some sleepless nights as well and it would be very cold i mean i know you can put insulation in but it would still be mm-hmm. cold yeah in the I'm loft yeah. mm-hmm. but that's what they're doing and so tim and ty are working on renovating the barn and mm-hmm. <laughs> of course that does not go over well i've never really understood what tim's problem is with ty no no I think it, it sort of feels like an end joke at this point of like they've never really explained it but it's just sort of exists. <laughs> yeah it's like I don't know he just I it's it maybe that he's being protective of Amy but like yeah I don't know Ty's such a solid guy I, I don't yeah. really yeah. get it I don't understand like the guy has like worked his way through like school and became a vet like I don't know how how you pick a better guy yeah your daughter. <laughs> It was weird. And uh, Georgie, she says she doesn't want to go to Vancouver. And she says, you're acting fake smiley. And he says, I liked it better when you were fighting. At least you were honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, this is like the hard part of like, everybody's just trying their best here. And like, you know, Georgie's not wrong, but he obviously, you know, Lou's just trying the best she can. Um, yeah and you know Lou's right like Jack it, so Peter has a right to see his kid and he has a right to sort of introduce them to you know his world yeah and you have to fake it sometimes <laughs> yeah so yeah. you make it yeah. like you can't I mean having like all out fighting does no good mm-hmm. and uh, so you just have to make it work uh as best you can and I understand George's point, but on the other hand, uh, you can, it's just so draining to have that kind of conflict mm-hmm. that um, it, it makes sense. Um, so then uh, at the end, they get the, um, you have Georgie staring down the, the, the horse um, and she lets him uh, run free. And mm-hmm. that was a, a pretty good scene. Uh, I I still think that um, uh, Alicia Newton is one of the best actors on the show. She's yeah, really yeah, good. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They definitely like they got so lucky with her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, then Ty and Tim get the water running at the at the loft. It's very yeah. exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim was and... just so hilarious in this episode. It was like dragging. <laughs> like at first, I thought it was like a problem of him just not wanting for some reason to like against Ty, but it just seemed like he'd spread himself too thin and said uh, yes to too many things. Um, but yeah, like he's done people, in the past. Like, yeah, yeah, and you think you, in that regard, he would be happy for like Ty's help. But yeah, he was just typical Tim all the way through the episode. Yeah. And uh, so then Lou signs the divorce papers or the separation agreement. And Mm -hmm. then Georgie finds it and takes it. And she obviously doesn't want her parents to separate. But, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just that part of growing up is that I think kind of realizing that your parents are are flawed but it makes sense especially for georgie because she just barely got this stable family and then it's kind of taken away from her in yeah, just a couple yeah. years yeah i think we need to sort of remind ourselves of that every now mm-hmm. and then of like you know this kid's just finally found like our, our home um and she's so like it's so a part of her um and it's it, it's sort of become our sort of life and our you know, I can't imagine her in like a city. Yeah. I also loved this, the whole scene in this episode with Jack saying hello to the horses because he's been in Arizona. 
I thought that was such a sweet little scene. And then there's a whole conversation between him and Georgie, which I thought was also very sweet. Yeah, yeah. I was so happy the second they walked into the room. I was like, oh, yeah, like a a Jack and Georgie scene. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) me too. (laughs) (laughs) So what would you give this episode uh, one to ten? Um, I would give it an eight. Um, there was nothing that was obviously like you know blowing me away in terms of like story, but I felt like it was a very solid episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I was gonna give seven point five, so basically mm-hmm. the same. We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies Podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Yeah, I agree. All right. So then we have Begin Again is the next episode. And it's Ty celebrates graduating as he and Amy diagnose a difficult patient. Lou struggles with being a good parent through the separation and impending divorce from Peter. So overall, what do you think of this one? Um, yeah, like this one. Um, again, I felt like uh, uh, these three episodes are very like on the same level. Um, yeah, it, it's sort of setting up things <clears throat> for future, you know, for the rest of the season. Um, but yeah, it was sort of good. I loved the sort of Amy getting back into her, like a you know her sleuthing um you know yeah yeah I love those moments um yeah I thought it was a very strong episode again yeah so there's is kind of a lot happening on this episode but it does Mm -hmm. it almost feels like these three episodes it's interesting that we review them in sets of three because I feel like this they were kind of a a group one long episode almost yeah yeah I agree the three it's Um, the positive thing of like doing the three episodes because you're not sort of left, you know, feeling one way about Lou. You know, we get a whole arc just from these three episodes. Yeah. Well, and isn't Steven the cutest thing you've ever seen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, it does feel like Jake 2.0, but like, we True. love Jake, you know. So. Yeah. I love Jake and I love Steven. And yeah. I mean, he's obviously there to sort of be the opposite a situation uh mm-hmm. with uh or not the opposite he's obviously there to be the uh the contrast for georgie to see uh his parents you know divorced he has to go mm-hmm. spend time with his father and uh, you know so it's sort of this contrast for her that she can see of how to yeah. deal with all of this uh but uh but I was mad at her. Why did she go on that date? Darn it all! <laughs> it was so cute. Yeah, yeah, he's perfectly cast as like the the like the perfect first boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's so yeah, he's so sweet. He's so nice. Um, and he just wanted to sit and have lunch with her. Like, yeah. Oh, she she loses her nerve, and uh, doesn't go on the date. Uh, yeah. but uh, I thought they handled it really well though yeah yeah and uh so we also have this whole plot with this horse named buddy that they find and it turns out it it is from an abandoned lot abandoned mm-hmm. house uh and georgie was pretty funny in some of those scenes mm-hmm. <laughs> georgie was funny in some of those scenes and she's like uh oh the we can go in through the window you know and i don't know <laughs> it was yeah. like what no <laughs> i will say like the second they showed up to this like mini sort of ranch uh, situation i was like oh my is this going to be like amy and ty's new thing of like they want to buy this like the second i saw the for sale sign yeah 
I was like, oh my, are we doing like a impulsive buying a rundown property thing again? Um, please no. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I don't know anything going forward. Yeah, um, it, it did not bode well for a uh, for Lou and Peter's relationship. No, hopefully, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Right. Hi, and Amy. But, but yeah, it turns out the seller Janet uh, was mm-hmm. the niece of the owner, uh, but they weren't close. Uh, but now she's got this home, and she doesn't know how to kind of take care of them, and uh, she. Uh, and she's just overwhelmed yeah yeah and I think Heartland is really good at this stuff of like I know I know a horse owner has you know endangered her horses but you know she doesn't live in Heartland she doesn't know how to reach out for help she doesn't know anyone she seems like she's a single mom you know yeah. she can't she's put this house on the market and no one's buying it so she's sort of in a really difficult spot um yeah, I think they handled this really well of having her, you know, not being like a villain. You know, she just, you know, someone really down in her luck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she just is, you know, trying to figure this all out with her with her uncle. I mean, I can only imagine that would be overwhelming. But, you know, you would think that she... I know with how bad Buddy is, you think that she would be a little more aware, but um, but yeah, I, I they do do a good job of kind of of telling these stories and creating somewhat nuanced characters. I think. Yeah, yeah. Not just like hateful, horrible. They have some that are just yeah. the hateful, horrible animal haters, like the um, the one with the um where they break the knees. That one. Whew, yeah, that was rough. That was yeah that was rough. yeah uh anyway uh did you die laughing with caleb whistling that was so funny <laughs> honestly anytime they put like tim and caleb together is so hilarious yeah uh, <laughs> that was really funny it's such, a, like, it's such a perfect like caleb thing as well i was like yeah. i don't know how they came up with that but that is so perfectly caleb he would absolutely do something like that yeah so Georgie is giving Katie riding lessons and I don't really understand Lou's problem I get that she doesn't want anything with the uh to look bad for the uh divorce but I mean it's the most harmless Mm -hmm. thing like just they're just going around in circles yeah around the thing like I don't know yeah Especially is it something that she would have probably helped Amy with, you know, there's that age difference. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I guess it is, you know, very much like trying to get us to the point of, you know, Lou's in a really difficult spot and it's not great having to think about, you know, if, you know, Katie Falls, would Peter use that? Would Peter's lawyers use that? Um, and that's not a great place of like anybody to be mentally. Um, so yeah, I can definitely see why it would sort of get to her. But yeah, they've definitely like aged up Katie, which is pretty good. Yeah, they did a good job with that. I mean, she looks yeah. exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And I've always liked the relationship between Georgie and Katie. I think it's cute. Yeah. They have a good friendship. Mm-hmm. And I kind of relate to that because my uh my mom had uh babies when i was uh when i was 11 16 and 18 so i kind of the whole big sister uh relationship i i definitely relate to that Mm -hmm. but um uh but then we have uh scott uh giving getting champagne for cassandra and ty uh, they, uh, they have graduate, they're graduating. And, uh, so they, he encourages them to take the day off. And so then Caleb, Cassandra and Ty end up partying at the camper. I mean, can you call it a party? <laughs> <laughs> I, like I mean, they got, to feel, I was expecting to feel like 20 people and it's just the four of them. I'm like, yeah. guys, come on. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, 
I guess they got sloshed. So if that's your idea of a, a fun party, then, <laughs> but that's not, not for me. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 I'll that I'm not there. Yeah. <laughs> So Georgie is told not to do the lessons. She does the lessons anyway, which I thought was going to be more conflict than it Mm -hmm. ended up being. You have this scene with Jack and his horse paint. Oh, I don't like this. Oh. (laughs) They're just setting us up for heartbreak, Rachel. Yeah, I know. (laughs) I was like, oh, I love the scenes. But yeah, you're right uh he was so jack is so sad and then he plays his guitar and it helps buddy Mm -hmm. which was so sweet and uh then uh tim is trying to get jack to go see the doctor uh for about his knee when it turns out he's the one that needs surgery on his shoulder so tim like yeah. when they get out the car to like pop it back into place. <laughs> oh yeah, my God. there was. <laughs> yeah, like parked outside the doctor, just going to the doctor's. <laughs> yeah, there were some times with Chris Potter. He did a good job. I was like, oh, yeah. that felt painful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I didn't really understand why Lou tears up the um, separation agreement at the end. Yeah, I, I think she sort of comes to the realization of like, we need to try and make this work without, you know, all the lawyers and things like that. Um, and mm-hmm. try and come to like a different agreement. Um, okay, because, yeah, because yeah, I was like, she's still separated in the next episode. She's not. Yeah. So I thought that was a little confusing. But yeah, I see what you mean that they don't yeah. need the legal documentation. Yeah. I think they just come up with a, a, a sort of solution on their own and both agree to it by the next episode. Mm-hmm. yeah and then amy gets ty a little desk plate a little uh for his office dr ty that was so cute yeah yeah so sweet i was like because he's like what if he's getting in a way and things like that um but yeah like amy mm-hmm. and ty are just on like you know couldn't be better in these episodes no drama they're very understanding and communicating well mm-hmm please me continue <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it was really cute uh yeah i liked this episode i thought this was pretty solid um i would give this one an eight yeah same yeah all right last episode is called writing for a fall after enlisting amy to help perfect a trick to perform at an upcoming rodeo Georgie gets pulled away by Lou and Peter, who insist she focus on her schoolwork. And so overall, what do you think about this one? Um, yeah, like this one. Um, I liked it, the fact that it had, you know, the fun sort of rodeo um, aspect of it. Um, you know, we had Scott in the last episode, but he's a little bit more than this one. Um, you know, we had Casey back. Um, yeah, it was very, you know, but it felt very much like a continuation of, of those first two episodes. Felt like we were yeah. sort of mostly dealing with the same stuff. I liked this episode too, and I think having Jade back was nice. Was fun. Yeah. 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 So Jade, uh, she's on the bucking horse at the beginning, uh, but this is just training. This isn't actually competing, and mm-hmm. she wants to compete. She thinks she can compete, uh, but tim is nervous about that about her i don't want her to get hurt Mm -hmm. worried about entering jade and uh and then her mom is also very against it Mm -hmm. yeah which you knew immediately that she had forged that there's there was no way yeah 100 percent. like especially (laughs) considering when you think about the fact that her mom's a doctor um and a rodeo town (laughs) um yeah I imagine that's like 90% of our like patients coming in um horse injuries yeah um but yeah I thought this was a good episode of for Tim just in general of like a lot of the things with Casey um but the fact that you know Jade is his first sort of success in his school and I'm having those sort of nerves of like letting her go out there and, and sort of potentially get hurt um is something that you know, he's going to have to reckon with it if he wants to, you know, keep this school open. Um, 
basically. I thought it was a really good, like, these were really good Tim, Tim episodes. I didn't hate Tim once. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there really were pretty good Tim episodes. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I mean, he, she, he did try to call her mother, but yeah. I don't know, I probably would need more. I'd probably try multiple times. Uh, yeah. but, um, it was, it was pretty believable. And I just, we, we agree that Casey is definitely the best relationship that he has had. Yeah, for sure. On yeah. the show. Yeah, definitely. The yeah. They have good chemistry. Well. They work together. Well, they respect each other. They have similar, uh, I think philosophies on, on life and everything. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was so lovely uh, yeah. that, you know, he, he wants to help her to honor her late husband. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jack kind of calls him out and says, you, you know, you're struggling this more than you let on, mm-hmm. but he didn't let his sort of petty side ruin the moment for Casey. Mm-hmm. He was there for her. And, you know, I just appreciated that, that he like swallowed his pride and he did what was right. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's a really hard part of like, I imagine that's a really hard part of struggling with addiction of like having to have that conversation every relationship mm-hmm. every friendship you know having to you know potentially sort of admit you know a weakness or yeah. your flaw or you know that's how he sees it um but yeah these were really really good episodes and, and Casey is so good for him and it's the first relationship that we've been on the same level in terms of like I feel like all of his previous relationship they've all wanted more from him than he's willing to give um, yeah. and it feels like these you know these two are very much on the you know both previously married you know yeah. so it's just trying to make it work so yeah yeah and that whole thing with not wanting to take the pain pills like that that was good I mean it was just a softer side like of Tim letting his pride down which mm-hmm. has been his downfall for for most of Heartland <laughs> yeah yeah, for sure. yeah so what do you think do you think math is totally radical <laughs> math radicals absolutely not, absolutely not. <laughs> math was my worst subject yeah. worst yeah. like I just didn't get it um and I think a lot of it was you know the education system and the teachers that I had you know they just didn't explain it in a way that helped me understand it um and it, it was also that time of like you know calculators you know do we use them do we don't um so yeah yeah I totally uh, like agree with <laughs> with Georgie in this episode of like math is the worst and yeah it was always yeah. my important subject it was always the worst I, I agree. My, my school's math team was pretty terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, I've had one teacher who just flat out admitted at the beginning of the semester that he only was a teacher because he wanted to, to be a coach. Um, and, and, uh, and he, he would just put up, uh, problems on the board mm-hmm. and then just ask certain students to solve the problem. Mm-hmm. And that was it that was all the instructions basically was like our the students teaching the class I mean he was he was a notorious lemon he was a terrible teacher and and that was unfortunately most of the most weren't that bad but we're still not good not good math teachers and um so that's part of the reason but also it's just not the way my brain works I I I always think oh is this the exception to the rule is this the, am I, am I remembering everything right? Um, and whereas I think some people, they really like the concrete nature of math. For mm-hmm. me, I much prefer the, uh, let me write an essay and explain my view. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. I think I'll sure. be able to convince you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I can't I was do so that with math. I was so unfortunate, like all the way through secondary school, I had like the same math um, because I was in like the lowest level. Um, I had the same math teacher all the way through um, and his whole thing of like if you have a problem and you can't solve it you would put up your hand and say I can't do this um, and instead of him coming over and explaining it to you he would just do it and then walk away and I'm like that doesn't teach me anything that's that, that's nothing um, 
And we also had, I don't know if you had those of like those books that had all of the answers in the back. Um, and oh, so yeah, most, yeah. Kids, most kids would just like copy the answers out the back. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and yeah. how old is Georgie supposed to be? Do you know in, at this point? Is she I think 14? 14. 14. Like, yeah, I think she seems like she's maybe 14. So she'd probably be doing algebra, right? Mm. I think, yeah, I thought, Al- or geometry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's fine to use the calculator. I, I mean, sometimes you need to use the calculator because it has things like pi and stuff like that 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 uh yeah worked into the calculator mm -hmm. i think louis whole issue was the whole like exam you couldn't use a calculator so there's no point in in using it if you're not actually going to be able to use it in the lesson Mm -hmm. so if if you can't do it by hand then you know you're probably still going to end up with the same result Um, yeah also just like georgie and lou bond over different things that you know, Georgie and Peter bond over and, you know, Peter is just better at explaining math to her, I, I guess. Um, and, you know, that's probably difficult for Lou to... Yeah, because yeah. Peter and Georgie, their relationship has always been one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. And even Amy said, like, her math, you know, tutoring isn't great, so... <laughs> yeah. I really liked the whole scene between Jack and Tim where Jack Mm -hmm. is telling him, he says, nothing good comes from measuring yourself up from a ghost Mm -hmm. because of Hank. Yeah, yeah. That was a good scene. Yeah, and it added, like, a lot of depth to, like, Casey's character because, you know, if she's going to be around for a while, I would love to see stuff, I'd love to see stuff of Casey outside of, of Tim. You know, I don't want her to just be the love interest. I would like to see, you know, are working with Amy or Lou or you know even Jack you know I would love to see her be more of like involved in the family and in that one yeah. and th- you have also Georgie working on this big trick uh where she's trying to do the um trick riding where mm-hmm. they also two horses she's standing up on them and then they do the jump and uh, that did uh, definitely look tough. I mean, very yeah, impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for like a kid her age, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, couldn't get me up there for love of money. <laughs> <laughs> and you have Ty and Amy kind of talking together because uh, Ty gets an offer from Scott about mm-hmm. uh, about being a, becoming a partner in mm-hmm. the clinic. And so then that kind of spoils Amy's plan of them working together uh, at the ranch. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ty says, it's our marriage I care about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they kind of go back and forth on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you yeah. think Ty should have done? I thought this was all handled really well. Um, mm-hmm. I thought Amy handled it really well of like, because if it had gone any other way, we would have been sort of saying, well, it doesn't make sense that, you know, it's sort of a, a, a little bit of a fairy tale of them, you know, head in the clouds, thinking that they can, you know, start this business and, and out of nothing, they don't have any sort of um, nest egg to sort of start the business. You know, their home is on top of a barn that's not finished. Like, they're very much starting out. And the idea that he has this amazing job opportunity, you know, right out of the gate, you know, he's very clear with Scott of like, eventually I want to go work with my wife and that's my plan. Um, and eventually, like, I suppose he would become Scott's yeah. competition down the line. Um, but Scott is very aware of that. There's no like hiding anything from everyone, uh, from anyone. They're very much all, you know, aware of what's going to happen down the line. Um, but yeah, I thought, I thought it was interesting and, and, and really good writing that, Ty was the one with the, the sort of hesitance. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if now Cassandra <laughs> will um, have a problem with this, you know, with mm-hmm. Ty getting becoming the partner because he does yeah. take the offer. And I mean, then you're going to have three doctors at this, you know, small clinic. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what 
Cassandra's role is going forward because I, I'm assuming she's still in a relationship with with Caleb. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, I just don't want them to sort of retread the sort of Ty Cassandra sort of rivalry. Oh, I know. Um, um so I, I wouldn't be down for that, but I do think it is interesting and it makes sense, you know, Ty and Scott. You know, Ty is basically a vet because of Scott. Um, and I really yeah. like their body, so. And maybe they could make something work where he still helps out. I mean, they'll be living there. So of course he's going to help out some at the Harland, but um, maybe, you know, he could do like mornings at Harland and then go for the afternoons at the clinic or something like that. Yeah. And he's been able to help Amy, you know, previously during all his, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, going to school and, and sort of working as a vet. And, you know, Amy's right. Like, He's going to go be a partner and he's going to learn so much, um, you know, that's going to be valuable going forward. And he's also yeah. he's going to get money. And yeah, it's an amazing opportunity and it wouldn't have made sense for him to turn it down. So then Jade uh, rides Whiplash, which mm-hmm. is an intense horse, and she gets bucked and she collapses. Yeah. And then her mother gets very upset uh, and... Uh, so we don't we we don't see kind of the ending we'll see i guess the next episode what happens there tim tells casey about the pain addiction like we talked about and he says i'm no hank and again that was a pretty good moment for tim pretty vulnerable yeah yeah yeah, for sure Mm -hmm. and then peter agrees that he will come see the girls as much as possible he won't make them come to vancouver yeah. i don't know why it necessarily has to be the whole summer like why can't yeah. they go for two weeks or something like that like she could take a little time off of trick riding yeah yeah i thought like lou had a good point of like them going there when when he had vacation like it made no sense for lou and, and i guess you know i sort of agree that if they're going to go there for six weeks and he only has half of that time off and the rest of the time they would be with a nanny like and you know georgie sort of you know like she says she made a commitment to the the trick riding and she really fought to be a part of it um so yeah it, it, i do i did understand where lou was coming from with that um i do hope they have lou sort of i, I, don't I just know think say, yeah i don't could... know how to suggest this out like you know slamming on lou or, or, or sort of i do like lou as a character but i think she that Peter has compromised the most mm-hmm, no in terms doubt. of like um in terms of making things work. And I, I suppose that is part of like taking on, you know, you know, the family and, and sort of becoming dad to, you know, someone who's a foster, then then adoption, you know, they have to be very considerate that, you know, Georgie has never had this before. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know why he couldn't just, they couldn't come to Vancouver for a couple of weeks for a visit or even yeah. just a week or just a visit. And that mm-hmm. would be really fun. And then yeah. I guess I don't really understand why it has to be both of them. Like mm-hmm. why couldn't Katie come for the summer? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could have like Georgie and Katie not in one episode and then them come back and it, was, it could be no way for two weeks. Like it would be absolutely fine yeah Um, yeah it's it's not going to take away from the show yeah i agree uh but at least it seems like we're heading out out, away from that conflict instead of escalating it yeah for sure so there we go that is this episode uh i would also give this one an eight i thought it was it was good a good one yeah i agree yeah 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 Well, let us know what you think of these three episodes. If you're listening, we'd love to hear your thoughts and are you excited that we're back and covering season nine? Well, let us know in the comments (laughs) section. Uh, We are. And uh, Michelle, how can people find you? Um, On Twitter at Michelle R. Benson. And I just want to quickly say um, UK Netflix has removed seasons seasons one to six of Heartland. Um, So if there's any UK listeners that are concerned just keep an eye on it. This happened like a couple of years ago. Um, and within a couple of weeks, it was back on. 
Um, so yeah, just keep an eye on it. Um, I did kind of panic when I saw it. I was like, please don't let it be season nine. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've yeah they've removed season one to six for some reason. But yeah, just keep an eye Weird. on it. Weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Run Tomatoes. So please take a look at that, and also make sure you are following the podcast at Homeworkies Pod, the Homeworkies Podcast, all of our social media, and if you are listening on iTunes, please leave us your five-star ratings and reviews. That helps us so much. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We have our playlist of all of our Heartland content, including uh, the interviews that we've been able to do with Amber Marshall and Michelle Morgan. Uh, And so take a look at that. And uh, please check out our our patron group and merch store. We even have Heartland inspired merch. So take a look at that. And thanks so much, everybody. And we'll see you all next week. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.